Hi, this is Jeremy Moskowitz, Group Policy MVP and founder of Policy Pack Software, and as a Group Policy MVP for more than 10 years, I know from admins just like you how hard it can be to truly answer the question, do I have a particular group policy setting out there and working? So why would a setting not make it there as expected, and why is group policy troubleshooting so hard? Well, it starts out because you might have a lot of group policy objects, and with inside those GPOs, multiple settings inside them possibly conflicting. You could have a complex OU structure, computers going up and down on the network all the time, multiple domain controllers and replication problems, or misconfiguration by other admins. Of course, you've never done this, but you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> a computer or user got moved into a different OU by accident, a GPO was deleted or unlinked, a group policy was disabled or half disabled, or the group policy object's contents were changed. So ultimately, maybe your target computers got your GPO settings, or maybe they didn't get them. Using Microsoft's Group Policy Results Reports can help you determine if you've actually got settings on your target computers. But then you need to individually request information one by one from all of your computers and users. You need to manually read the report and see if the setting you want actually made it to the machine. But ultimately, this is a real time consuming process, asking each computer and user one by one, did the setting make it there? Policy Pack Group Policy Compliance Reporter changes all that. It's a program that each administrator in your organization can run either on their own or share data together as a team. First, you ask all of your computers or a subset of your computers what their current state is. That's called a snapshot. I'll go ahead and create one now. When you do, your computer then asks all the computers that are currently online what their current state is, and you've now got the information locked and loaded for the next step. Next, you'll click on Tests, and you'll define a test about what compliance looks like. To accelerate things for this little demonstration, I've got three tests that I've already defined. For instance, if I want to verify that the screensaver password lock must be enabled, and that that is called password protect the screensaver, and you can see it's set to enabled. Or you can use a group policy preference item, and you can verify things like is a particular URL, like policypack.com, delivered to the desktop. Or a policy pack application manager setting. For instance, is Java set to very high security? Creating a new test couldn't be simpler. You can either right click and create a new test. I call this a test example one here. And a policy pack compliance test is based upon a GPO. So you can click on either computer side or user side, policies, preferences, or policy pack and figure out exactly what you want to test for. So for instance, if on the user side you wanted to go to admin templates and test to see if the control panel was expressly prohibited, well, you could do that. And it's easily done. And you can see the example report is returned here. You can also right click and import a test from an existing group policy object backup. So if you have a group policy object that you want those exact settings are there, you can simply click on a GPO. I've got one called very important security settings. Click on OK. And this will import a GPO from the backup. So in this example, you can see we're checking for some computer side security account password policies, such as being able to store passwords using reversible encryption. We want to make sure that's disabled. Password complexity is set to enabled. And enforced password history is only two passwords remembered, and so on. So these are the things that you could possibly test for. Next, we're going to click on the results pane. Here is where you can specify which test or tests that you defined earlier that you want to verify. For instance, if we want to see if the screensaver password lock is in fact enabled on the machines in our snapshot, we'll just click OK here. We can see that the resultant compliance test will only have this one test in it. We can simply select the snapshot that we created earlier and generate results. And it then goes through each machine to see if it's true. And you can see on the user side, we, well, we have a warning for two of the three computers. So if we click on the first one, what does it tell us? It says, well, password protect the screensaver is in fact missing on that. So if we go over to Win7 Computer 64 and right click and go to personalize, we'll look at screensaver and sure enough, it is not set. If we were to go 
take a look at the next computer on the list, which is Win7 Computer 32. It's also not set. If we look at the third computer, Win7 33, all tests pass. And you can see because we have an OK right there. Let's see, is it actually accurate? If we right click on this computer and go to Personalize and go to Screensaver, boom, sure enough. Group Policies delivered the setting, but Policy Pack Group Policy Compliance Reporter has actually verified that that's true. If we move back to the Compliance Reporter, we can then also subtract a test and add another particular test, or you can summate tests together. So if you want to test for the screensaver password lock must be enabled, and Policy Pack must be on the desktop, and set Java security to very high, you can do that very quickly. This represents the thing that you want to make sure is compliant. This is the report of everything that is going to be tested for. You can then select your snapshot and generate results. And here, now all of these tests together, additively, must pass. And the only computer that passes your bar of compliance is Win733. Something else is wrong with Win7 Computer 32 and 64. So if you click on this computer, you can see what's happened here. Well, it never got the Java setting. To correct for this uh, on this computer for Win7 Computer 32, well, we got to do a little bit of actual work. So now what we'll do is we'll figure out where is the Java being set. It's being set to eSales desktops. You know what? I bet that I just forgot to link them over to our West Sales desktop. So if I now link an existing GPO that has my set Java to very high, okay, and go over to that computer, okay, Win7 Computer 64 and run GP update to now get this signal. I'm downloading the latest group policy settings and we can rerun the test to verify we actually got the settings we expected. Okay, now that that's done, let's go back to our computer here. And back in the compliance reporter, let's go ahead and create a new snapshot because we've made some changes. So we'll create the next snapshot here. It'll evaluate all the computers that are currently online. And let's go right to results. Let's leave the tests that we had specified. All we need to do is select the latest snapshot that we just took right now and click generate results. And we still have a warning. Uh-oh, turns out we still don't have the compliance set for the protect uh, password protect the screensaver for our West Sales users. Well, let's fix that now. So we'll go to our West Sales users. We'll simply link an existing GPO, and that's the screensaver password lock. We'll go back over to the computer and run GP update. And this is how you can iteratively determine are your tests, the ones that you want to make sure, actually on the machines or not. But the Group Policy Compliance Reporter is the tool that helps you get to that goal very quickly. So now that that's done, we'll go back to the Group Policy Compliance Reporter. We'll take another snapshot, last snapshot, I promise. We'll right click, create a quick snapshot here. Let's go back to results. Let's pick our now latest snapshot here and we'll generate results. And now that computer is compliant. So Win733 is compliant, Win7 Computer 64 is now compliant, and there's something wrong with Win7 Computer 32. Oh, he doesn't have the Java either, and he also doesn't have the configuration. So clearly this computer got moved into a place that he shouldn't have. I know you'll love this tool because it'll help you quickly determine which computers are in fact in compliance and which aren't based on the tests you selected. Those tests you can create on the fly, or you can use an existing group policy object. Thanks so much for watching, and if you're looking to get started with the Group Policy Compliance Reporter, just get in touch with the Policy Pack sales team and we'll get you started. Thanks so much, and we'll talk to you soon.